just out for a little stroll around and about near where I live and it's bluebell time. Now these plants, we call them bluebells in England, in Scotland they call them harebells. There's something curious about these. What you're seeing on the screen now is not what I'm seeing here in person. There is something about bluebells that is actually very, very difficult to photograph. I don't know whether it's to do with the way the human perception works or just the way our eyes work or some other trick like that, but actually what I'm seeing here is a lot more blue than I know that you're seeing on the camera. And of course, you can't experience the fragrance of these flowers through a picture of them. So this is like a reminder to me, every spring I need to get out here, experience it first hand, because there really isn't anything else quite like it. First hand, as they are just coming to the perfection, which is right now, is really the only way to enjoy these beautiful spring flowers. Down here by the river, I just saw a fish rise there in the water, but didn't get the camera switched on quite quick enough. I have seen kingfishers down on this piece of river down here. Very lovely and tranquil and quiet. listen to the birds singing in the trees and further on just down here by the river where it's a bit damp and shady we've got this plant which is ramsons this is wild garlic and it's just coming into flower now these beautiful white flowers and these big strap shaped leaves very strongly scented of garlic but actually not such a strong flavor so actually it smells really pungent and powerful garlic but actually it's quite a mild garlic flavour when it's used in the kitchen and it can be chopped up raw and mixed into butter to make garlic butter or it can be used in soups, casseroles anywhere where you might use garlic or onions great swathes of it here and the bees are loving the flowers I don't know if that makes the honey taste of garlic don't suppose it does. Out of there, Eva! So a couple of other plants while we're here. This little one here with the pink flowers. This is Herb Robert and it's a species of geranium, like the crane's bill. Beautiful little flowers. If you just take the time to notice the detail on that. Look at that, look at that pattern. And those little lines there they're not there for decoration, they're there to show the bees where the nectar is. And what else have we got? Here's a plant which was a favourite of mine and my friends when we were at school. This is called goosegrass or cleavers and as you can see it's got these, it's covered with these little backward pointing hairs. You probably can't see them on the picture here but it makes it a very clingy plant and so Schoolboys, when I was at school, used to love to pick a piece of this and stick it on the back of somebody else's clothes. It just adheres to anything that's got a little bit of a nap on it. It will adhere to clothing very readily. And they used to hang tails of this stuff on each other as a kind of joke. This grass-like plant here is Pendulous Sedge, just coming into flower. It's not actually a grass, it's a sedge. It's related to grasses, just coming to flower. Later on, when the seed heads develop, the seeds can be gathered and can be cooked and eaten as a grain. I've tried that once and I wasn't able to really get anything useful out of them, but we might have another go this year. And then it's always worth just looking at the little details. Look, look at this little beetle here. Beautiful little black beetle. Slightly bluish sheen to his or her shell. This plant here, growing by the water's edge, is hemlock water dropwort. It has roots that resemble parsnips, but you'd have a really bad day if you ate one of those. It's rather poisonous. Just here we've got some bracken ferns starting to unfurl. These tightly coiled 
heads will eventually open out into the fern fronds. Now I have heard it said that these can be eaten like asparagus. However, I've also heard it said that these things are toxic. So I think we'll give that a miss. Just coming to an end here is the blossom of blackthorn, the slow bush, like very small, very sour, bitter plums. Slows are used for flavouring drinks. There's one flower, look, still just hanging on. And so the fruits will start to develop, which are like tiny black plums. And later in the year, we'll pick some of those and we can use them to make flavoured liqueurs like slow gin. And just as the slows are finishing, this is hawthorn, just about to burst into flower. The buds there, almost ready to open. And right on cue as well. Another name for hawthorn is Mayflower. And we are just about to go into May. We're, we're getting to, close to the end of April, start of May. And this will flower pretty much on cue from the start of May all the way through to the end. This little plant here is called Stitchwort. And it has these lovely little white flowers which have notched petals. It's a relative of the carnation and these little notched petals are I believe where it gets its name Stitchwort because the little pair of white marks looks like a sewing stitch. So that's Stitchwort. It's into a shady piece of woodland and here we've got wild arum and this is quite a exotic looking plant really. But this is wild arum, has these spiked shaped flowers that open out into a central in inflorescence and then surrounded by this cowl like leaf. And you can see there's this chamber at the bottom here which is where all the female flowers are situated and in the top part here the male flowers on that spike and so it will open up to allow beetles or other insects to come in gather the pollen and then later on the female part will open up and insects will again visit that depositing pollen from other flowers fertilizing the female flowers which will then develop into a cluster of red berries so just down here not far from the bank of a river we've got celandine this little yellow flower here is called celandine and it's pretty much coming to an end now it's a more of a early spring flower but there's still a little bit of it about so thanks for joining me on this spring walk today thanks for watching and i hope to see you again soon Thank you.